Hello you guys, welcome to Evita Cooks and Preps. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for all your love and your support. Today I'm going to be using some of my preps and I figure why not share with you one of my childhood favorites. While I talk about the recipe, I'm preheating the skillet on medium high heat and to the skillet I'm going to be adding the achiote oil or annatto seed oil and you can find the recipe in the channel and I'm adding about two tablespoons of the annatto seed oil you can use more or less it just depends on the color that you're aiming for um, the way I prepare my annatto seed oil as you can see the uh, color is very intense uh, sometimes depending on the seeds that you get um, the color may be a little bit lighter but uh, the annatto seed oil in this particular recipe is used obviously as the base oil. It's also going to be used for color as well as a little bit of the flavor. And once the oil is heated, I'm going to start building the recipe. And that brings me to the recipe. Like I said, I'm going to be using some of my preps. And for today's recipe, one of the preps I'm going to be using, which happens to be the main ingredient for the dish, is this can of corned beef and I don't know about you I know that uh, some of you may have mixed feelings about it but this is actually one of those uh, ingredients that we grew up eating in Puerto Rico and it actually filled our bellies quite a few times and I'm very proud to say that I like it and I enjoy it especially the way my mom used to make it which is the recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you today I will share my recipe for stewed corned beef I don't have a favorite brand to be honest with you especially these days with the prices of food and inflation um, I pretty much I buy whatever I can get on sale and when I do find them on sale like I did with these which happened to expire on 2025 I stock up so uh, once the oil is heated I'm going to be adding uh, the base. There's many ways of making this stewed corned beef. I'm just going to share with you the way my mom used to make it. And while the corned beef is cooked, I have a pot of white rice that I am cooking, which happens to be the way that I enjoy eating it. It's a very simple meal, but honestly, it brings me back home every time I make it. So the oil is nice and heated, and I'm going to be adding some onions. Uh, the rule of thumb is that we always want to start with the onions so that they can start releasing some of those aromas and flavors and then build the flavors from there. Okay, so I'm going to saute them for just a minute or so. And that sound means that my rice is ready to be stirred. And by the way guys, this is the rice that I have in storage from 2020. Uh, so I'm working my way through that rice right now. I think this is the last of the uh, rice from that batch and remember that it's very important that we rotate our preps that is key and it's essential uh, so that we can uh, preserve the food long term um, this particular batch of rice I preserved in five gallon buckets with diatomaceous earth and I also have a video on my channel how to do that one pro tip about cooking with annatto seed oil is very important that you don't use high heat when you're cooking with it, especially uh, when you're building the flavors because annatto seed oil will burn and will turn bitter. So once the onions are nice and translucent, I can go ahead and add the peppers. I'm sharing with you guys the way my mother makes this recipe and it's absolutely delicious. Depending on the region of Puerto Rico you're from, uh, this dish is made many different ways. In fact, I know that in the southern part of the island, uh, specifically Ponce, uh, they like to make it stewed and then they add french fries to it, which it is absolutely amazing. Today I'm gonna keep it simple and make it the way I grew up eating it, especially since I'm serving it with some white rice. The next ingredient, which happens to be another pantry prep or food prep, and that is my sofrito criollo. And yes, I consider my sofrito criollo a food prep because for my style of cooking and for a lot of my recipes, the sofrito criollo is the base of a lot of those recipes. So I always make sure I have some on hand. And I'm adding it now because I want to saute it with the onions and the peppers. Even though the sofrito criollo contains peppers and onions, I always like to add fresh ingredients to my cooking base 
If you want, you don't need to add the onions or the peppers. You can just add the sofrito criollo straight into the oil. I promise you the onions and the peppers add a nice little touch to this recipe. And I have the heat on medium. I'm gonna saute it for about a minute or so or until the sofrito criollo becomes nice and fragrant. Stirring constantly, of course, because it can burn. Next, I'm adding another must-have ingredient, and that is the sazon with culantro and achote. I'm using my homemade sazon, but it is the equivalent of one envelope of the uh, leading brand of sazon with culantro and achote. So, let's continue adding and building flavor into this dish. I'm coming in with another ingredient that I keep in my pantry and that is the all-purpose seasoning. I'm also using my home blend. You can use the all-purpose seasoning of your choice. I make mine using all natural ingredients from my garden. And I'm also adding some adobo and again I'm using my own homemade blend. But you can use the adobo of your choice. Okay. And believe it or not, this dish comes together very quickly. The rice is almost ready. And we're just waiting on the corned beef. Looks a little dry, but we'll take care of that in just a minute. Look at that lovely color. Okay, so we're coming in with the tomatoes, the diced tomatoes. And the tomatoes are going to give the uh, sofrito base a nice sauce. Okay. Here we go, we're gonna let that go for about a minute or so, so that the tomatoes can release some of their natural juices. Okay, the next ingredient is also a pantry prep, and it's the tomato sauce we made recently for a fraction of the price of one can of tomato sauce. And if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check that video out. And look at that. The sauce looks absolutely incredible. Almost the same consistency of the brand of sauce that I used to buy. In fact, this one's a little bit better because it's made naturally. And I'll link to that video in the description box below the video so you can check it out. And if you make the sauce or this recipe, leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you guys. Our sofrito base is technically all finished with the exception of the corned beef, of course. And depending how saucy you like your corned beef, you may want to add a little bit of broth or water. I might even do that because my family likes it with a little bit of sauce. And of course, uh, the corned beef can hasn't changed much. I want to invite you to check out a video that I did on how to properly open a can of corned beef. It's one of those earlier videos that I did when I first started the channel. This is going to feed six people. And look at that, the, uh, the corned beef is coming together nicely. It's a little dry for our taste. So I'm going to be adding some water. And I have about a cup of water usually is what I use. And this is actually the consistency that my family likes. But again, if you like it dry, you don't have to add the water. And I'm gonna allow this to come to temperature and come to a boil. When mommy had them available, she would also add some roasted peppers to the corned beef with a little bit of the roasted pepper juice to add a little bit of sweetness to the corned beef, okay? Last but not least, los dos primitos, cilantro and culantro. And we're done, and of course, I like to finish mine with a nice splash of hot sauce. And just like that, we've made the most delicious childhood memory that I can share with you guys at this time, especially during these cold days. It brings me back home with mommy and papi and my siblings. And to be honest with you, uh, there's times where I make these dishes, it's almost as if I was in mommy's kitchen. Of course, mommy did not give me recipes. Uh, we learned the good old fashioned way, just watching them add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. 
and that's what makes our food so different and unique. It's nice and bubbly, definitely ready, smells incredible. For more different and delicious recipes like this one, consider subscribing to the channel, like, share and comment for the YouTube algorithm and activate the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And until next time, I'm Evita Cooks and Preps. Bon appetit! You really have to try it.